Hello everyone, welcome to my craft channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JS Hobbies and Crafts and thanks for stopping by to take a look. So you want to learn how to make a journal but you're not sure where to start or how to uh, make them or the little signatures or blocks of paper. So first off I want to say there are several different ways to do this and in this tutorial I'll show you the way I like to do them. So this is a 7 inch by 9 inch journal with about a 2 and 3 quarter inch spine. And I'm just going to flip through the project, what we'll be making today, and do uh, be sure if you want to make this to download the free copy of the materials list as well as the pre-cutting measurement scoring guide, which will help you uh, get ready before we begin making this. So really quick, I'll show you. There is a lot of pages in there, and um, let's get into it. So in here, what I have is pockets and bands, and there's tucks all the way through this in each one of the blocks of paper or signatures as they call them. And I take you step by step on how to create this as well as the binding and the way I like to do things. So um, I'm not going to go through everything because I think I only have about five minutes to show you this left on this uh, video after making it. So there's only one part to it. But as you can see, what you can do after you're done uh, making it or during it, you can grab into your stash or your reserves or scrap pile and make some of these little folders where it's writable on the inside. I've also added from my stash some lined paper. I have white paper and I've stamped images. And I've also made uh, little folders. And this is writable with your black ink. Here we have a band, and you can stuff a lot back here, a lot more than what you see, but I just have some papers in there. And I'm just going to keep flipping so you can see what the general idea is. These are little tuck or uh, short pockets, and um, you just stick things back in there. And then of course we have our white paper that we can just write right on in here. And I did do some stamping. Now in the inside of each one of these signature blocks of paper, um, I did use to bind it in some um, stretchy or elastic type cording. And we can pull out these large folders which I show you how to make and completely writable on the front and back and especially on the inside. And they just tuck right on back in there. And here's another band. We have some paper clips with some lace on it, tucked up some things that I can write on. And we come to the second part on the inside. Once again, you can remove this. Oop, forgot to do that. And inside the third one, we have the elastic and another band and again you can stuff a lot more than what you see I've got in there. So this is a really good uh, journal if you like to write or even lay uh, photographs in here. I myself like to journal kinda like the old style diaries. This is what I do and I do lay photos in mine as well if I'm uh, journaling and I want to uh, snap a picture down to show what I did or what what my day was about. And it just goes on and on guys so there's quite a bit in here. Uh, and again this is one of those pull out styles. And we come in towards the back. 
and our last page. So there is quite a bit in here and that's what we will be making. Now I did show um, my Lilac Flowers one and I wanted to make the journal with that paper. However, it's on back order. So I did choose this and this is a Prima line and I liked it because it had a lot of plain paper, decorative paper that you could just write on in it. And the colors are beautiful. So let's move on into the materials list. Materials list. So I wanted to create this journal with the lilac flowers, but unfortunately it is on back order and I can't get my hands on it. So I went through and looked through several paper packs that would make for a good one, and I found that the Prima Autumn Sunset is an excellent choice. We get a lot of blank pages in this with some designs. As you can see, they're very nice front and back. And some cards and just different things. So you'll need one of these and 24 come in a pack. The next thing that you're going to want, now this is totally up to you, you're going to need 20 sheets of 12 by 12 white cardstock. Now you can use 65 pound or you can use like an 80 or 85 pound. I'm going to be using the 85 pound. And the reason why is I like something really nice to write on. And if you if you want to use 65 pound, that's fine. And I have an example here after we fold these up and I stamped. Now notice on the back you can slightly see a little bit of the ink come through. So that's what you're going to get if you use the 65 pound. On the 80, you will not. Now for the wrapping, you're going to need two sheets of 65 pound 12 by 12. Just two. Okay, so that was that. Uh, two pieces of 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard and we'll cut that down to size. One thing that I'm going to be using is an elastic cord and I'll probably be using the cream color in this. I don't sell this but you can pick this up at your local craft store. I picked mine up at Joann's. Um, so some elastic cord is a good for our binding. If you cannot locate that you can use a, a waxed rope or even one uh, one sixteen or one eighth inch uh, ribbon. Uh, I like the elastic cord because it get, it gives a little bit and I can just lift it up and slide things in okay, like you saw flowers. I flowers. So you're going to want flatter style flowers uh, if you're following along with the color scheme I'm using. Um, what I did was I made these and these were left over from the Muse mini album tutorial that I did. And what I used was the Oakberry Lane Blossom stamp and the die. And if you don't have a die cutting machine, um, the flowers are actually easy if you just stamp them and you can cut them out. I have a flower shaping and inking tutorial that I did and it's in part one of the Muse uh, mini album tutorial right after the materials list I believe. Anyway, um, these are popped up but they will be going flatter for inside. So I just have some left over. Um, if you have any paper clips like the jumbo size, you know, um, grab some because we can use those uh, for some embellishments and, and everything. Flat back pearls. I am using the domed shape. And these are approximately, oh, they're about a quarter inch. You can use three eighths. You can use whatever size you want, but I have about nine here. Um, so check your stash and you don't have to have domed. You can use anything you want or none at all. For adhesives, our main adhesive we're going to be using in this journal is our Art Glitter Dries Clear Designer Glue. And you'll want to make sure that you get the metal tip along with that. And for the binding part and adhering down a lot of the stuff, we will be needing our 3 8 inch score tape. We will be using tie back and our binding to ensure that our spine never separates from our cover. And I sell these in the envelope. They're very large size. And we'll just need a couple strips off this. So this one sheet will last you uh, quite some time. Inks. Inks that I use for my flowers that look really nice is the fired brick and the squeezed lemonade. And to get the different 
colors. I have lighter and I have darker. It's just a how you apply. You can apply it darker or you can do lighter. And inside here, the middle, I have the lemon chiffon prills, which look really nice. And you just sprinkle those on after you daub a little glue. I'll be coloring up some leaves uh, and vines, and I'll be using the Leafy Accents die and the Leafy Accents stamp. Now, if you're hand cutting, I don't recommend you uh, buying this particular stamp set. They're pretty intricate uh, to cut out, unless you don't mind. Uh, in the Oakberry Lane Blossoms, the flower stamp, they do give you some leaves here, and they're much easier to cut out if you're cutting it out by hand. The inks I use for um, when I color this in, I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. It is the peeled paint and the crushed olive. And this is very simple. All you have to do is use the darker to stamp your image. You just ink around the edges really dark and then you can brush some on the leaves and then you just kind of dob this over the top. Another thing um, I am using to dress up my flowers and my leaves is the Wink of Stella. And the Wink of Stella, as you can see on this, it kind of has some sparkle to it. And let's see here. Here's one. So all you do is you brush this on and it gives a really nice shimmery look to it. And I'll be doing that on my leaves as well. This is totally optional. You do not have to stamp uh, on your white sheets that are inside your journal. Uh, here is an example that I have. Um, I don't sell these stamps. I just grab from my stash just a bunch of different ones. Anyway, the Memento Potter's Clay gives you a really pretty color like this. And let me just flip this over. The fired brick, which is the same color as on my flowers, um, looks really nice too. Show you what that kind of looks like. So it's up to you what you would like to do, but um, I think it looks really good with these colors. Trim punches. I'm going to be using the EK Tools trim punches and this will be um, one of the things I'll be doing um, on each section of, of the uh, blocks or the signatures that we do uh, but I'll be punching on each side um, I'm going to be using the larger ones and um, I have diamond flowers embroidery which this is and I also have a 5 8 inch one that's listed as large it's called floral vine and um, so if you would like to add some extras to your journal rather than having flat edges we'll be adding these lace so for my cover in the spine um, I'm going to be using a yard of this and I've already got mine cut uh, and uh, we have that in our store but please check your stash to see what you have and also for wrapping around the spine and the cover I'll be using this and I've already got mine cut now inside the album this is totally to taste if you don't want to do this you don't have to I'm going to be using a variety of like it reminds me of Clooney type uh, lace it's really nice stuff and it's more of a beigey color, so we just got some in our store, and I'm going to be using a variety here of this. And um, you don't have to check your stash, like I said. And I, like I said, on the materials list, I'll have links to the different ones that I'm using, so you can pick and choose, or just use what you have. Okay, that is all I can really think of. Um, feel free to check your stash other little things that you want. Let's talk about the equipment or the tools that we're going to be needing. You're definitely going to be needing your uh, craft knife. You're going to be needing a paper cutter and a scoring board with a scoring tool. It's very important. Um, to punch the holes, now I'm not using an awl tool. So if you have an awl tool, that will work. I'm actually using, to make my life easier, uh, one of these. I do not sell them, but this is the big one so that I can slip my paper all the way in there and then I can punch with the smaller one. If you don't have any of those things, uh, your craft knife will work fine. Let's start off with our chipboard. You have two 7x9 chipboard covers 
and you have a two and three quarter by nine inch spine. Let's erase anything on that spine. We're gonna work with the spine, marking it. So we are nine inches this way. Let's place our ruler down. The first thing that we're gonna do is come down one inch and just make a mark. Next, come down to the eight inch and make a mark. We are going to do the same thing on this side. So we will do one inch and eight inch, one inch, and we will do eight inch. Now what I want you to do is lay this down, line this up with your lines and draw. We're going to come down here to where that was as well, line it up, and we will draw a line down here. This is going to help us now. Now let's grab our ruler again. This is what we're doing right now is centering our pages, making our marks so we know where the holes go. So we're going to line this up with that first line that we have. And the first dot you are going to make, and you're going to need the 16th side if you're using my ruler or any other ruler. So I am all lined up there. The first thing is we're going to go to 9 sixteenths, and I'm going to make a round little mark, just like that, 9 sixteenths. The next one is 1 and 1 eighth. So I am going to go to 1 and 1 eighth, and I'm going to make my next dot. Next one is 1 and 11 sixteenths. So 1 and here's 11 sixteenths. And I'll make a dot. 2 and 5 sixteenths. So I'm going to go to 2 and 5 sixteenths and make a dot. We're going to come down here and do the exact same thing. The first one being 9 sixteenths down here, 1 and 1 eighth, okay, the next is 1 and 11 sixteenths, 2 and 5 sixteenths. So this is what you should look like. And that looks good. So for this, what you're going to want to do, and we're going to be punching through these several times with our layers and making sure we're, we're all in there good. If you do not have one of these, and if you do, you move this until you can see one eighth in that little square. And then what that does is activate this little small one. And all we're going to do is is punch on each one of these little dots. So you have four dots. See? Just like that. Now, if you do not have anything like that, you can use your craft knife and make a hole. Just make sure your hole is big enough to get your um, whatever you're using, whether it be a uh, string, uh, like wax string or ribbon, just make sure you can get it through your hole or your elastic band like me. So what we're gonna do is continue on punching these holes out. I've got all my holes punched out, as you can see. Let's move on to binding this. And what we're first going to do is grab our two pieces of 11 by 12. Okay, we have two of them and we're going to cut this down. So grab your spine and your covers. And the first thing we want to do is grab our 3 8 inch score tape. And I think I have some here that is already opened. I do. Okay, so here's our second one on the side. 
of one of these. Now we are uh, 12 inches and this is 11 inches. So one thing that I like to do for this is at the top of each one I put 11. That means I'm 11 inches up and down. And that way I don't get turned around after getting the adhesive on and attach it wrong. So we're just going to come over to the top and run a piece of our 3 8 inch score tape along the side. And then let's burnish that down to get all the air out from underneath. The one thing I like to do so I can line this up right is I like to grab something with the flat edge. So I'm just going to slip that underneath there and I'm going to press that up against this to keep it straight and I'm going to remove my score tape. Then what I can do is once I know this is um, where it's supposed to be, I can bring this up and over that score tape so it lines up as best I can get it and then we'll burnish. All right. Next thing, let's grab one of our covers. And what we're going to do here, and again, remember we are 11 inches tall. If you were to place this, um, that should give you approximately an inch, inch, and you'll bring it over to where you have an inch over here. Okay? So we're just going to draw around this. If you get a little more on the top than the bottom, that's okay in space, but just try to keep it as even as you can. We're going to draw around. This will make it easier for placing our stuff. Okay, so there's that. Now from this line, what I want you to do is measure over, line that up with your pencil mark, and why don't we do a quarter inch here. So place a pencil mark at a quarter inch, Let's place our spl spine down, and we're going to want to be even with that down there as best we can. And now what we do is just draw around this one, okay? Now for this thing, it looks like my, um, my overlap here, my seam is going to be uh, right at the edge when I place this down because we're going to measure over a quarter inch over here too. So mine might buckle on the edge but it's okay because these edges do get covered. So we're going to place this down about a quarter inch over, about a quarter inch, and we will line this up trying to keep straight top and bottom as best we can anyway and we'll, we'll draw. Oh, my crazy drawing skills here all over the place. Okay, so I got those. I'm gonna move these to the side here. Now, from your pencil line here, what I want you to do is measure over one inch, make a pencil mark, stick this on your paper cutter and trim on that so we don't have all this excess that we don't need. But this does come in handy for our journal for writing on. So this is what you should have at this point. And let's start with one of our covers here. And we'll grab our score tape. First thing that we're gonna do is lay this on the edge of our chipboard and we're to go all the way around like a picture frame to start. Okay, this is what you should have. Let's just place one down the middle and one on either side of that. Okay, so what we're going to do next is on our other cover, we're going to put the score tape on the same way. So let's do that. I have mine down and the next step is to burnish. Always burnish anytime you glue something down, anytime you use score tape, because you want to get the air bubbles out so that there is absolutely no chance of lifting from any air drying out, um, getting under that adhesive over time. The next thing we want to do is remove the score tape backing and this is where your craft knife does come in handy because it helps to lift it up. We're going to place this first one right inside our square over here. And I think that's good. 
We're going to remove the score tape now off the other side. And remember, be mindful you have a space in between the spine piece there. And we're going to place this one. Okay, so this is down. Let's just flip that over and burnish really good around the edges, the whole thing. Okay, let's flip that over. I'm going to set this to the side so I can see what I'm doing here. Here is our spine piece. Okay, let's grab our score tape and the three eighths should go all the way around the edge without interfering there with your holes. So we're going to start by doing that, going around. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is lay one right above those holes and right below the holes. Okay, for this we're just going to go one and two. This will be plenty. And we're going to burnish this down and we're going to place it on our piece here. So give me a moment, I'm going to remove all my score tape. I am ready to place my spine piece down and it just goes in that little area there. Try to keep that straight. And I will flip this over and burnish. Let's grab our Tyvek pieces. Tyvek, we had two pieces that we cut at one and a half inch by eight and a half inch. So when we place this, all we're going to do is come right, we're to center this top to bottom first, first thing. And we're to come up right next to that hole. Here and here. Just like that. Let's place our score tape down. And where'd my score tape go? So I like to get the edges first and then I'll just put one uh, down the middle there and that should be fine. And we're going to do the same thing on this other one. And we're definitely going to burnish this down. Now score, or Tyvek is kind of awkward to work with. It kind of wants to crinkle up on you. Um, just smooth it out the best you can. If you get any wrinkles in it when you lay this, it's okay. It does get covered up. I'm going to clip off some overhang I got here. Okay, so let's place this. We'll do the first one here. Okay, so we're going to be centered top to bottom as best we can. We're going to come over to the side of those holes without covering them. And we're going to place this. Okay, let's do the same on this one. So on this one, we're going to try to line it up, try to stay consistent. These do get covered, but we're just going to place that to the side of that hole. And we'll burnish that down really good. For this, all we're going to do is we're going to need our uh, 3 8 inch uh, score tape. And we are going to start over here in the corner. You can leave a quarter inch without any adhesive because we do uh, cut at an angle so that we can wrap our corners. But we're just going to go all the way around this uh, like a picture frame. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lay another one right up against uh, the chipboard going all the way around. So let's do that and I'll show you mine. I have my score tape down as you can see. So we're going to start wrapping here in a moment. Uh, the first thing that I want us to do is get the sides ready. And this, doing this, just take your bone folder here, push it up against that chipboard and kind of help bend the paper, loosen up those fibers. This does help with um, eliminating getting what we call the splits on the edges. Um, the splits on the edges are can be very common um, from wrapping too uh, tight to uh, the paper being so thick and unmanageable. So this does help. And uh, so we just work our paper a bit. Just kind of bring your bone folder up against that chipboard. 
just kind of help it. And then you can come back after you've worked it a little, you can come back and kind of go like this, and it does help. Okay, let's clip our edges. So one thing is, is look at the corner of your chipboard. You're gonna measure out 1 8 inch, and then what you're gonna do is clip. Okay, just leave yourself some room there for tucking. That's all that is, and you do not have to measure this out. Uh, I don't, but we're gonna do this on each. I'm gonna turn this, easier for me to see what I'm doing. Oops, that's cutting it a little close there. Okay. So now that we have that, let's remove the score tape from the sides. And don't jump ahead if you've never uh, tucked your corners before, because I'll be showing you how to do that. So all we're going to do now is take this and pull it over. And then we're going to burnish it down, making sure we get it all the way top and bottom there. We're going to do the same over here. We'll just fold those right in. Okay, tucking. So let's remove the score tape from the bottom now. This is where your tool comes in handy. What I want you to do is lay it down and use your tool to go around that edge to tuck that in. Okay, mine tucked the wrong way, but that's okay. So I'll just tuck it around the edges there. That one's not precise, but you just bring it around like that and that's what you should get. Once you have that, you can now pull this up and burnish it down. Really good. Over in the corners, I like to kind of mash it down a little in case it wants to pop up. Okay, let's do that again. Remove our score tape, take your tool, and bring it around as best you can. And then we'll bring this up. and burnish. So you should have some nice tucked edges here. And you should be able to open up and not have any splits. I need to clean my desktop. Okay, right now it's very important we poke right back through those holes. So if you're using the craft knife, you can just poke right through your holes very easily. If you are cheating and using this, you just line those holes right back up. I love this tool. It is so awesome. Great invention. And you just punch. Okay, so our holes are repunched through so we can and don't worry about any shards like mine I have these things I'm not gonna worry about it because it's gonna get covered let's work on getting this part in in your paper pack you will find this print if you're using the same pack as me on the back it looks like this let's put this on our paper cutter and trim all the way down Oh, really quick, any leftover trimmings, because there is color on here, there is images, we could always possibly use those. So just put them in a scrap pile. And any leftover cuttings throughout this tutorial, whether it was your white card stock to any piece, even a sliver, I want you to keep them in a scrap pile. And I call that our reserves. And I frequently say, in your reserves, pull out a skinny piece or whatnot. So that, that's just a little tip for understanding um, my madness here with trying to keep organized. Okay, let's cut that off. Another thing is, is I try to stay consistent on how to tell you to cut. 
and this is basically for the people that are wanting exact measurements of the paper sizes or you're using the same paper and you want the same results. So for this, what we're going to do on this piece, we're going to turn it sideways. So this little album thing is right here. We're going to measure over eight and a half inches and cut. So this is what your cut should look like and you will have this left over. Put this in your reserves or scrap pile, whatever you want to call it. The next, and we're going to put this to the side here. Grab out this piece from your paper pack. It is identical to this one. Let's take off that trim piece. Okay, so you have the trim piece off. We are going to turn it this way now. We're going to measure over eight and a half inches and cut. Stick this little piece over here in your reserves. Let's turn it to look like this now. We're going to measure over five and a half inches and cut. And this is the piece that we want. So what's going to happen is we're going to first lay this one down, okay, and we'll center that top and bottom. So what we're going to end up doing is bring that over and this is going to come over the top, just like that. So the inside, this is our inside, is going to look nice. We're going to first start with this one. And for this, we will want our score tape. And the first thing we're going to do is go around the outside edges like a picture frame. And the reason why I'm not using glue is because I want to make sure I get those edges down really good with my score tape. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're just going to do one here and one here. We're going to burnish this down really good. And we're going to remove our score tape backing, and we're going to place this together. So we are, I'm trying to get this even top to bottom, and I'm going to place that. So I am approximately, what am I? From the edge, I'm actually about a quarter, or is that half or quarter inch from the side? And that would be a quarter inch from top and bottom, but it looks like a little bit more after wrapping. Okay, I'm going to set this to the side. Let's flip this piece over, score tape around the outside like a picture frame to start. So this is what you should have. Let's grab our book back over here. And this is where you're going to want your pencil. This is to help you with proper placement of the score tape, which has to go uh, all over the place here. So flip this over, make sure you are the right way when you are going to be placing this. Leave your quarter inch on this side and line it up here. So now what I want you to do is just take your piece and flip it this way. Don't flip it this way, but just flip it around. And you will overlap it like you would, line it up top and bottom like you normally would if it was the right way. So that score tape's going to hit. Now what I want you to do is push it up, trying to stay as even as you can on the sides there. Okay, and we have our overlap. All right, so this is where you're going to take your pencil, and you see where your gusset is or your valley, where your, chip, your, your spine meets your cover. There's the galley. Now come over onto your chipboard at least a half inch, make a pencil mark. And you're going to do the same thing on this side. Here's the little valley. Come over about a half inch. Okay. Everything in between here needs a line of score tape right next to each other. And this just ensures that when you open and close, there's no bubbling and it is down and there's no... It's a clean. Uh, I like it to look clean. I, I may be overkill, but I, I never have a problem uh, with anything separating when I do it like this. Uh, I need my other one. Where is my other? Here's some more. I have some more 3 8 here. And my other pencil mark is right over here. So I've marked this. Everything in here now gets score tape laid right next to each other all the way over. So let's continue on um, 
putting our score tape, lining it up, and then we'll jump on what we need to do over here. Okay, so I'm going to place one spaced probably about a half inch from this one, and then I'm going to go one down the middle here, and I'll just do two shorter ones on either side. I think that's plenty. Let's burnish this down really good, especially up and through here, and uh, we're going to place this together. So I'm going to remove the score tape back. I have all the score tape backing off. And remember, we're going to overlap over here. Make sure you don't come over too far. You should have about a quarter inch in from the side, and we're going to line that up. And I'll place it. Okay, we're going to burnish this really good. Making sure we get those edges. And in the galley, don't press too hard to where you're going to uh, cut your paper. It's just meant to lay in there. But definitely want to get and smooth that all down. Now, if you do not smooth it all down, uh, you will definitely know because it will bubble up and then you can just smooth it back down. Okay, so now we're just going to lift it up. There is no bubbling. Looks good. And there's no bubbling over there. If you see a little bit of a bulge, just burnish it back down. But there is the inside. Flip it over, punch back through your holes. I punched back through my holes. It is time to set this off to the side. We will decorate the outside once we get our pages in. On your pre-cutting and measurement guide, we had cut 12 pieces of our white cardstock that was eight and a half inches by 12 inches. And what we did with these is we laid it on our scoring board and there's my scoring tool. Here it is. On each one of these we scored at six inches. And then the instructions were to fold on those score lines and burnish it really good. Make it real crisp. So once you've done that, what we're going to do is set all of these off to the side and let's get our inner uh, decorated paper ready. In your paper pack, we're going to pull eight sheets. And what you're going to want to do is pull one of these on the back. It looks like that. We're going to pull one of these really pretty. And on the back, it looks like that. We're going to pull two of these. And on the back, it looks like that. We're going to pull two of these. And on the back, it looks like that. And we're going to pull two of these with the little fox down there. And on the back, it looks like that. Now those are the ones I am selecting. If you would rather select um, eight uh, different ones than me, then go right ahead. So what we're gonna do right now is on each one of these is we're gonna cut off this trim piece. So let's do that. We're gonna start cutting on our decorated paper. And I'm just gonna put this off to the side here. Grab the ones with the little fox on there. Let's just turn that sideways. So the fox is up here. Now turn this around. The fox is now over here on either ends of the corners. We're going to cut these both the same way. And what we're going to do is looking at your page like this, we're going to measure over eight and a half inches and cut. After making that cut, you should have one that looks like this, and then one like this. All we're going to do is lay these on our scoring board. We're going to leave it at 12 because that's what we need. And what we're going to do is score them at 6 inches. And this one as well. Let's fold on the score line and burnish that really good. Okay, I'm going to stick those off to the side and I'm going to leave this out here so that we can just do this together. Get my cutting board ready to go. 
Okay, next one. Let's grab these two. Whoops, there's my trim piece. These are the ones that look like this. And they are like this. Let's first turn them sideways. You'll see the pumpkins up here. Okay. Now what you're going to do is flip this so that the pumpkin is on down here and the pumpkin's up here. And we'll cut these both at the same time if you can. So all we're really doing here is if we did it individually, if that's how you need to cut yours, is we're turning it sideways and we're measuring over eight and a half inches and cutting this one that way. And on this one, we're measuring over eight and a half inches and cutting that way. So that's why I'm saying to just flip it around and your cut will come out fine. That way you can, you can chop two down at once and save some time. And then, of course, these go in our reserve. Okay, here is my first one. And again, we're going to do six inches. And we're going to fold on that. We'll place this up there. And we will score it six inches. And we're folding. And we're going to burnish that. Make it real crisp. And we'll put those off to the side. Okay, next piece. Let's grab this one. And on the back, it looks like this. We'll just turn it size, sideways. Measure over eight and a half inches and cut. So we're going to keep repeating this process where we cut it at eight and a half and uh, score at six inches. Fold and burnish. And I'm going to burnish mine a little bit better when. Uh, when I get the scoring board out of the way. Okay, you have two more that are the same. Okay, we're going to turn it sideways so it looks like this. Just flip this one around so now they're at either corners, these two pieces. And we will cut this at eight and a half inches. And this will go in our reserves. Okay, let's score at six inch. And on this one, we'll do six inches. So you can see why I uh, did it that way. One gets turned the other way because now what we have is here's everything. If we did it normally, we would have two identical. But I wanted to be able to use this bottom part to have a little bit different. So, oh, on this one, I think one's going to fold out, so we have this pretty paper here. And this one I can fold, so the pretty paper's on the inside there. And this is pretty too. But the butterflies and the lighter colors, so we'll stick those off to the side. Here is our last one. And this one, what I want to do, I think, is, gosh, that's so pretty, very pretty. We're going to turn it this way, measure over eight and a half inches, and cut. Now we just score it six inches. And we'll fold. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way and burnish these really good. We're going to put these together now. So all my decorative papers are here and all my white inner pages are here. So if you have not folded yours yet, do so. But we will be uh, making four signatures. In other words, they're like blocks, four blocks um, together. Okay, two stacks. Let's start off with this. Let's find in here this pretty one. Okay. So I have this and I'm going to lay it open. I'm going to grab one of my sheets and it just goes in there. And we can line them up better in just a moment. The next one I'm going to grab is this one. And this will lay down in there. 
And now I'm going to grab two of my inner white ones. And here is our first block or signature. And I can straighten those up and burnish my edges a little bit better at a moment. So there's our first one. If you've got some paper clips, just paper clip that and set it off to the side. Let's start with our second block. And I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to open that up. And we're going to continue to do the same thing. So I'll lay one of those. And I think I will do one of these. And we'll go two of these. There's our second set. And I'm just going to paper clip these. Okay, next. Let's go with this one. We'll open that up. We'll lay one. We'll grab one of these. And what we'll do is we will lay two on the inside. And we will paper clip these. And then our last one, let's go with this one being the bottom. This one. This one. And then two. So these are our four signatures or blocks of paper. Now once we put this in, bind all this in, um, that your pages are going to puff out a little bit more because we'll have pockets and bands and all that. Okay, next thing I want you to do, you can put these off to the side for now, we'll just keep those together, is I had you cut on the pre-cutting measurement guide a three and a half by eight and a half inch piece and we labeled that template. Now what I want you to do is grab your ruler, okay? And what you're going to do is line your ruler up at the top, come down three quarters of an inch, okay? And when you hit that three quarters, use your pencil right on the edge and make a dot. You're going to come down seven and three quarters. Let me just move that up. Seven and three quarters inch and make a dot. This template is for our inner pages. Let's grab these out. And what you're going to do is just open it up. And on this middle one is the one that you're concerned with. That's the only one. But you're going to line this up. It should be the same. Eight and a half inches. Okay. You should be able to see where your crease is. So I'm just going to bring this over to where I can still see my crease and I'm lined up and right on that crease I'm going to make a pencil mark and it's a dot. That's going to tell me exactly where I need to punch. Okay. So now with this, this is where you'll want to try and keep them straight. Now open them up, make sure your bottoms and sides are straight and that your your crease is the same on all of them lined up. Okay, I'm going to just place that down. Now you can use a binder clip to help you here, or a clamp, or even paper clips will help you on this. If you do not have one of these or you don't have an all, what you're going to do is definitely want to paper clip and hold this steady and use your knife and twirl around until you get through all those pages. Okay, I am going to use this because it's easier for me and I'm going to line that up and I'm going to punch. So as you can see, I've got my hole. Now on this next one, I always like to make sure I'm still lined up and you don't have to be perfect um, at all. Uh, sometimes I get a little off, but it doesn't matter. Your journal will still come out nice. Okay, so that is all there is to it. They are punched. I'll just close this up, paper clip it, and set it off to the side. Let's just go to the next one, and we're going to do this with each block that we paper clipped. So let's do that. 
let's line this up and start making our marks and we are going to punch through or use our knife to get through there and then we will regroup as soon as they are all done I finished punching all mine I got my holes through there and let's just put these in the order of which we would like to have them in our book so our first one's going to be this uh, for me anyway my second one will be this one my third and my fourth right here so that's how it's going to go into my book let's grab our book and oh really quick right now if you would like to stamp it will be easier for you to stamp now on your white paper rather than after it's in the book. I always forget to stamp mine and I always stamp it once it's in the book. So uh, it's easier to make an error that way on your stamping impressions, but if you would like to go ahead and do that on each one, I'm gonna wait until I have this together and so we can get through this because uh, we all have different stamps and stuff, so I'll kind of show you what I'll be doing. And I'm going to move this so I can get this better. Okay, let's grab the book. And like I said, the first one would be this one for me. And it makes no difference. You can arrange these any way you want. Let's grab some of our, if you're using the uh, elastic cording, fine. Um, if you're using um, something different, great. For me, because it does stretch quite a bit, I'm going to probably measure over a piece that's about, I'm going to try 12 inches to start here. A little over 12 without pulling on it. And you can unclip your piece. So what I like to do first is I'm going to go up through this hole and I should have enough here to where I don't pull it back through but then I'm going to come back through this one here the top one okay I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tug and you may want to depending on your elastic cord I mean maybe you want to go I mean, this will be fine once I get it in. I have enough string and it still has elastic. So measure yours up to make sure that if you were to pull, that you can grab two ends and you'll be able to tie it. And then you'll be having a couple uh, tails left over. All right, so all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start here at the bottom. Make sure my holes are lined up and I'm gonna feed it through there. There we go. So don't pull too hard right now because remember that will go through. So I'm gonna turn this sideways and I'm just going to bend this up so I can see what I'm doing. Make sure these stay lined. Okay, so I got mine through. Maybe 14 inches would be a little easier, but. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull like this back and forth. And now we're going to tie. So I'll just come down here. Now you're going to have some, um, when you're doing this, you cannot get it completely tight. I just kind of try to put my finger down. But you do want a little bit of give so that you can still slide something back behind. So there is our first one, and it is in. Let's grab our second one, and we're going to repeat what we just did. And I am, this is a different cording than I'm used to. I am going to give myself just a little bit more, uh, maybe about 13 and a half inches or so. That would be better for me. Okay, so my second hole next to that is here. Let's do our thing. One up this one. And I'm going to turn it. And one's going to go in through that hole. And I'm just going to kind of pull a little bit. Okay, make sure that all your pages are going the right way. And now we can feed that up through. So we'll feed that right up through there. I'll let that hang loose. I'll grab the other side. Make sure the holes are lined up. I'll pull 
that up a little bit. And feed this through the hole. And then I'll pull it back around. Okay, let's give her a little pull here. And we'll tie it. There we go. All right, we are going to continue to do this with the last two. So right now we have all of them in our album and we are going to begin to cover and decorate the outside. Now don't be too concerned that it's like this. Once we start getting our bands and our pockets in here, it's going to fill out a little bit for you and it's going to hold a lot of individual sheets that you can just pull right out and journal on or place photos on. In your paper pack, you will have two of these prints on the back. It looks like this. So first thing we want to do is take off those little trim pieces. I have both the trim pieces off mine. I'm going to double these up, looking at them like this. And we'll measure over seven inches and cut. So this is what you should have, two pieces. Sorry about the camera shaking there. We'll turn it sideways, we will double these up again, and we're going to measure over 8 and 7 eighths inch and cut. This is what you should have. What we're going to end up doing is placing one on the cover, like so, and that will give you a nice white border here and here, and we'll make sure it's centered so you'll see some over here. And also, this will be going along the back. So let's get ready to place these. We're just going to flip these over. The first thing that we're going to want to do is take our score tape. And on each one of these, we are going to place our score tape around the outside edges like a picture frame on each one. Once you've gone around the edges, what you're going to want to do is place one down the middle and one on either side. And then we're going to burnish this down really good. And we're going to place our papers together. I have all the score tape backing off my first one. Now open it up, make sure you're not placing it upside down. I've done that before. So if you open it up, you're looking the right way. Now we can place this. So like I said before, all we're going to do is try to center this the best we can and place it. Now if you get it on a little crooked, that's okay because we have lace that's going to go over the edges. Just make sure you burnish that down. Now I'm just going to flip this over. We're going to repeat that. We're going to now remove the score tape off this and we are going to place that and burnish down. So let's do that. I've got mine down. Now we're going to cut for our spine piece. So in your reserves you will have a long 12 inch piece like this. So the first and on the back it looks like this. We're going to measure over 8 and 7 eighths inch and cut. So this is what you should have. Measure over 2 and 7 eighths inch and cut. Before we apply our score tape, we are going to verify that this is going to fit and give us a little bit of white top, bottom, and right on the crease on the sides. If you are fitting like that, uh, you are ready to put your score tape on. If you are not, you can trim off a little bit more as needed. So, score tape. What we're going to do is we're going to first place score tape around the outside like a picture frame. So that's what you should have so far. Let's grab our book and we're just going to open this right on up. I want you to lay score tape and don't go all the way to the top but you're going to lay it right next to those bands. So I'm leaving a good half inch up there, coming right next to that band, and I'll go a half inch down there. And I'm going to do this in between each one. And I'm going to come right on over here and do the same thing right on the side. All right, let's burnish this down really good. We're going to remove the score tape off this, as well as remove the score tape off this. And we're going to place this together. 
All right. I'm just going to place it in between those uh, pieces there. Come up as straight as I can. And if you don't get it on entirely straight, that is okay because we have lace. That's going to be. And we're just going to make sure we get down in between those bands on each side. So oh, there's no, absolutely no way that this is going to lift. So you'll feel some bumps and stuff. So for my cover and spine, I've cut three pieces of my lace that was in a one yard cut. Two of them I was able to get to look like this that will reach top and bottom on the front. I have a little straggler I got to clip. And then for the spine, I was able to get what looks like this. All right. I'm also using another lace like this that will reach top and bottom. And this one's going to go down first because when we glue this down, this part here is going to wrap over the edge. So let's start there. I'm going to take my tip off my glue bottle because fabric does like to uh, soak up a lot of my glue and I can wipe off any excess here. So I'm just going to put it over there bring it over first. Now you don't want to do this with your album open and the reason why is because you're going to end up gluing your album to where it cannot open and shut. So I'm just going to go like this, try to keep it as straight as I can. Okay, so I got it like that. It's hanging over. And now I'm just going to make sure I get enough glue in there. And I can wipe off any excess, but right along the edge is what I want to get. I'll just prop this up and I can wipe off any glue that wants to seep out. And I like to just pat mine. It seems to go down pretty good. Okay, I'm going to give this a moment to dry. While that's drying, I'm going to grab my next piece and now I'm on the back. Make sure I look pretty even over there. Okay, now I'm just gonna make sure I get that edge really good. Okay, so I have that, and of course that's gonna have to, uh, I have to let that dry. On the back side, it's still wet, so I'm gonna give this just a moment. While our glue is drying on our lace, you should have, after cutting our inner white pages, you should have a bunch of three and a half inch wide by 12 inches. Now what I want you to do is, if you're using just one punch, then punch both sides of eight of these. I'm using three different punches, so what I did was I went three with the embroidery. I went two with my floral vine and I went three with my my other one which is called diamond flowers and they're punched on both of the long sides so once you do that we will be ready to continue on with our lace laying it over so I am ready now to place some lace so I have two that kinda look like this and hopefully depending on the cut that you got you can do that and then I also got one with open ends, which will be for the spine. We're going to apply glue to this, and we're going to glue that down right here on the front. I've got my front one down. Now all we need to do is do for the back. So let's get that glued down. All right, I got that down. Now for the spine, and what I'm going to do is just kind of split mine in half here. Now this one's a little more intricate because I have some loose ends. So I'm just going to be very careful about how I do this. Hopefully it will work out. If not, I will definitely make sure that uh, I fix that and mop up any uh, glue. And it just goes right there in the middle. And you might want to clamp that down, especially these little loose ones down here, to make sure that it stays while it's drying. So I think that looks really pretty. And I'm going to give this a moment to dry. OK, 
Okay, my spine is drying. I'm gonna use this to just kind of prop this up so you can see a little better what we'll be doing here. In your reserves, you will find this piece. On the back, it looks like this. So I am going to first just clip out this first one here. Like so. Also in your reserves, you will find this piece. On the back, it looks like this. Violet, we are going to cut out, and I'm gonna to try to cut so I can keep some of that gold there. And you're also gonna want this piece. Also in your reserves, you will find this piece. And on the back, it looks like this. We're going to cut this out. So we got that one. In your reserves, you will also have this on the back. It looks like this. We're going to cut this one out. And then we're going to start layering. The first one that we're going to put down is this one and I will show you where to place your glue. If you uh, took off your metal tip, put it back on. So underneath this, along this side, under here and here, we are gonna place glue. So just like that. So that we can still slide something back behind. And all I'm gonna do is place this at an angle. Next, we have this one that's going to place right like this. And what I'm going to do with this is kind of create a little pocket. So each side and the bottom. And we're going to leave the top open. And this one's going to be placed right like this. Okay, This piece can just slide right in there. The violet. We're going to make a little pocket. And I think we'll just place that right like this at an angle. And this little piece can slide right in there. Okay, so what I did was I have uh, a green leaf and I got my Wink Stella on there. Now if you are not, if you're using the Oakberry uh, Lane Blossom stamp and hand cutting out your leaves, what you would do is arrange several like a vine. So we're just gonna glue this down here. So I've got my glue on here. All I'm going to do is arrange this kind of like so, come down. If you have any scraps of lace, you can definitely add this for extra, like a little embellishment. And I'm going to place that right about here. Now I like to use a hot glue gun when doing my flowers because it, it tacks down really quick. So I'll place one here. I'm gonna grab two of the smallest single layers and I'll put one right here. And I'll grab another one. And just kind of put it right here. Just like that. Some other things that you can add is like the small little mini uh, pearls uh, strands. You can just take a little piece and double it up like so. Now, I don't, I don't think I have any of this in stock, but if you have it, you can add it, even a uh, ribbon. Ribbon, and you just kind of tuck it back underneath there, and you can have some little danglies there. Oops, kind of hard with this propped up. Anyway, and you can have, like I said, some little danglies here, or whatever you'd like. Like so. Our cover is complete. So 
so we're going to move on into going through the album and placing these pieces. On all of these pieces that you cut, they're 12 inches long by three and a half and we punched. On each one of these, I want you to measure over eight and a half inches and cut. But don't throw away the leftovers because we do use those. So let's get these all ready to go. I have mine all cut down to eight and a half inches and I set off the side the leftovers because we use those. So on uh, the first page here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down. Now I won't be using score tape for any of the rest of this. I'm just going to use glue. So I'm going to put a nice line up here and down here. Make sure you get all the way across your piece. And we are just going to put that right in the middle there. And we're going to glue that down. Okay, I'm going to grab another one of these. And I'll flip until, let's see, I get here. I'm going to place this down right here. And we may need to cut more and punch more, but for now let's just place these. Make sure your glue doesn't seep out and get any of your other pages because you will glue your thing shut. So I'm going to double check this one, make sure it's good. And that one. Okay, I'm in the second set here. And I'm going to grab one of these. And let's see, where do I want to go with this? I think I want to go right here with that. And you want to make sure that it is flat against your page so that when you do stuff things, it's a snug fit. I'm going to grab my second one of these. And I'm still in the second block or whatever you want to call it. And I think I'll come to right here, right before we get into our third block. So as you can see, I'm trying to lay these on the pattern paper rather than any of the paper that um, is writable. For instance, let's see, like here, I wouldn't want to put it down here because I can write on that. Okay, we are in the third, and I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to lay it right here. And I will grab another one of these, and I will glue it down right before we get to the fourth one here, it looks like right here. I'm now in the fourth block and I have two more left here. And let's see. I'm going to place this one right here. And you can put these anywhere you want, but in case you wanted to have identical to mine, the same results. And this last one, I think This last one, I'm going to come towards the back and it's going to go down right here. Now let's grab these smaller ones. We'll go back to the front of the album. And this is a great place for a little tuck down here. So when I do glue, I'm going to go to the underside and across the bottom. Make sure your glue is back underneath the side there. And I will place that there. Mopping up any glue that seeps out. Okay, I'm gonna grab another one. And I'm still in the first block. And I'm gonna go right back here. Okay. Let's go to the second one, and I'm going to grab the, these, 
and I think right here would be good. And mop up any glue for sure. And I got my other one like this, and I'm still in the second block. And I'm going to come back here. Oops, my page is sticking. And I'm going to go right here. Okay, I'm going into the second. Or what am I? That was the third one I think I got into. That or second block in the back. Okay, third block. I'm going to match up my trim with what I used there. And I'm going to place that right here. And I have another one to place, so I'm still in the third block. I'm just going to keep going through here until I find a good spot. Oops, kind of sticking together right here. You can see that these journals are super easy and they really don't take that much time once you get the hang of it. Okay, I got two more left here. And I'm now into the fourth block. I'm going to place one right here. Make sure I didn't glue my pages shut. And then the last one. I think we'll go right here. Okay, so we have those in. And like I said, watch your watch your glue and stuff. Let's create some uh, larger pockets. If you need to uh, cut into some full size sheets, go ahead. But I have four pieces now that are a total of three and a half by twelve inches. I'm going to set this off to the side. On each one of these, what I'm going to do is punch along the long side, only up here. On each one of these, grab one of your pieces, and we're going to measure over six and a half inches and cut. Okay, the small one we're just going to put in a pile up here. The six and a half is actually going to go on the cover. So we're just, just going to use our glue on the sides. Oops, along the bottom. Oh, my glue's all over the place. Now watch out for your crease here, but you should be able to place this and be away from it. So we're just going to place that down. And you'll wipe up any glue that uh, wants to seep out. Okay, let's flip. This smaller one, now on this one, we're only going to apply glue to the back side here and here. So you can get your papers in easily. Okay, whoops, my paper got glued together. That's okay, I'll just stamp something. And you just gotta be careful about that. I'm still in the first block. On your next piece, and I'll just grab one of these, we're going to measure over five and three quarter inch and cut. Your larger piece just stick off to the side. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And the reason why we're not going six is because we don't want it to interfere with turning. place it all the way to the corner like we did the other one and burnish and then make sure that no glue got to the other page like mine did. Okay, let's flip. This is a good one. However, as you can notice, it's way too big. Measure over five and three quarter inch and cut. Apply your glue like we have been and we'll bring it down to the corner of our piece. Now, if you want to place glue along the side of some of these, feel free, go ahead. If you feel it might get caught or something like that, go ahead and do that. It's up to you on what you feel, okay? 
All right, so that was in the second block. We're gonna move on over here. And I've got two pages stuck together. This one. So let's make this real easy. And what we will do is take another one of our pieces, measure over five and three quarter inch and cut. Measure over again, five and three quarter inch and cut. Take one of your pieces and we're just gonna do the same thing we did before. Bring it down to the, to the corner there of your piece. Match it up and glue it down. And if you want to place glue over here so it's a designated pocket, go right on ahead. Okay, let's see what we got going here. I'm just gonna keep shuffling through until I find a page that has something that I cannot write on. I can definitely write on that. You can see that with black ink, but some of the other ones I can't. And I'm going into the fourth block right here. I'm gonna apply glue and glue that down. This is one, so I'm gonna grab another one, measure over five and three quarter inch and cut and I'll do it again. And I'm in the back of the book. And for this, I'm gonna leave it open-ended so I can get bigger pieces in there. And I will bring this over to the corner. Now, if you want it slightly bigger, you can recut a piece if you'd like. All right, let's double check, make sure none of our pieces are gluing together, that we are dry. And this is just a real easy way to make a journal. And you have lots of places to write. Perfect, so now as you can see, we got a little bit thicker. Now we add some paper. So let's first grab, we have some more white cardstock that we can grab. And what I'm gonna do is start right off the bat and I'm going to make six pieces that are four inch by six inch. So for me, I'm gonna measure over four inches and cut. I'll measure over again four inches and cut, and then I'll cut uh, right in half at six. And I'll show you mine. So there are six pieces there, and you can put more paper in that you want. Um, we'll continue on. We have to add our decorative paper. But as you can see, these come in nicely behind there. You can just stick things right in there. And we're also, and I'm definitely going to need more cut. And feel free to use your 65 pound or whatever it is that you want to use. But to get us started here, you can see that this can hold quite a bit. So let's go back to the front here and start getting our lace and our decorated paper down. In your reserves, you will find this 12 inch long strip and on the back it is this. This is where we're going to measure to fit because not all of us may, uh, are using the same um, border possibly, the punches, or perhaps you're using a die, or maybe you're not using anything at all. So what I'm going to do is you're gonna bring this, if you have no trim, you'll bring it up here, okay? Leave yourself a little white border, and you'll come down to the bottom of your page and you'll make a pencil mark so that you'll know which way to cut that way. And you're also going to measure over to the side what you need. So for me, right there's good. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of a white ledge and I'll come down. Actually, I'm gonna move this up because then I get most of this in here, right about here. So my first cut, so in order not to trim down any leftovers, I'm gonna go this way and then I'll cut that way. Here's my piece, I'm gonna apply glue and I'm gonna glue that down. 
again, I think I told you this before, but just make sure you burnish your piece down after laying glue. I'm going to be grabbing some of my lace, and again, you can use white lace, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to measure to fit going over, and I'm going to just glue that right on down. In your reserves, you will find this print, this scrap on the back, it is this. All we're going to do is fold this over and we'll crease it. And this now is something that we can write in here with some black ink. We'll stick that in our pocket. In your reserves you will find this and it's 12 inches long. We're going to fold that in half and this now becomes something that we can open up and write in. We'll just stick that in there too. In your reserves you will find this. It's 12 inches long and on the back it looks like this. What you're going to want to do is some of you may be using this trim punch I'm using. Some may not be so we are measuring to fit. I'm going to place this so that I'm going to leave a little bit of white there. And my first cut is going to be long ways. So if you need more of this, take more of it. So I am going to trim. Once you have your piece, we're going to measure to fit going the long way. So I'm just going to cut mine off at the bottom and I'll glue that down. Now when you're doing that, one thing you may want to do is stick some uh, scratch paper or something underneath there when you burnish just in case any glue squirts out so you're not gluing it shut. I'm going to use this lace and I'll measure to fit and glue that down right in the middle there. Let's glue some leaves down right here. If you have a flower you can place it any way that you would like and I'll think I put mine right at the top there. And you can also make more flowers um, and do uh, whatever. Now when I place my thing, I like to dab it in the middle because I'm going to slide something up underneath there. In your reserves, you should have a very long piece like this. We're going to cut this out, the detach the violet and the other one there. We'll just get that right in half. Let's apply some glue to the top here. Slide that back up underneath. And let's see, we have some leaves coming out here. I need to attach that down. And I think this one's going to go hmm, over here, right here. Grab one of your smaller flowers. And I only have so many, so I'm going to reserve the rest for different parts here. But if you have bulkier flowers like this, I can just, it'll flatten down. Notice that there is spaces in between each section. So if you do have a bulky flower, that's where it would go. Let's move on. So now you can see with some of your leftovers what you can do and uh, just like this or make a white folder out of your white cardstock and then cover it with some decorative paper so that when you flip it open it is white on the inside. Let's turn the page. We have this little bit. Okay, right here. This is nice to use so I think what I'll do, it's a very short piece and we're going to measure to fit. So just in between here I think should be there side to side will be right here. So on this one my first cut's going to be this way and then I'll cut over that way. Apply your glue to the back of this piece or whatever piece you'd like and glue that down. In your reserves you should have this piece on the back. It looks like this. If you don't get into your paper pack but we're just going to divide these three we have all three of these pieces now. Now what I want you to do is cut three pieces. Oh, sorry about the camera. It likes to bounce. Cut three pieces of your white cardstock. Three and five eighths by six and a quarter. You're going to put this on your scoring board so you're six and a quarter across. You're going to score it three and one eighth on each one of these. And then you're going to fold and burnish. 
this piece here. We're going to place it down, trim off what needs to be trimmed in order to fit, and we're going to glue it down. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. So we will place it down after we fold, and then we will trim off any excess. And you want to leave yourself a little bit of white border, by the way, around there. And the same for this one. Oh, this one fits perfect. I have mine all down. So this is an example of a smaller folder. So you put your decorative cardstock on the front. Inside you can write. So these are fun. Um, I use those all the time when I'm doing my journaling and stuff. So I'll just stick this. Which one do I want? God, they're all so pretty. I'll just stick this one in right there. And I will we'll go... Oops, paper stuck. And I'll stick that one right in here. Okay, let's keep moving on. We have this. So what you can do is grab something. I'm going to use this from my reserves. And I'm going to place it and I'm going to measure to fit side to side. And I'm going to move this over so I can see where that trim is. So first cut is always this way, and then we'll go that way. I'm not going to use any lace on that. I think that looks good. I'll use lace here and there so that I don't use up all my lace on one album or journal. And coming to here, look for scraps that will fit first. I have a piece right here, and it'll give me some white border on the side, and I'm going to measure to fit that, that trim, and I will cut. Now, even though there is no spacing in between these pages, I'm still going to do a flat back purl. It'll be just fine. I'll just stick one right there. Let that dry. Whoops, it moved. Okay, let's flip the pages. Let's come to here. And it looks like I have something like this. So this is a good one for me to use. And if you can't locate this, you can find it in your paper pack or just grab a different scrap. So I'm going to measure side to side once again. And underneath my trim, if you don't have trim, remember leave a little white ledge there. So first cut goes this way, second cut goes this way. Now that little bit that was shaved off the side, I like that. I can write something inspiring on there. I'm just going to stick that in the pocket. I'll apply glue to this and glue that down. I'm going to grab some of my lace and I'm going to trim off any rough edges. Make sure I get glue on those edges so I don't shred. I'll measure to fit. And I'm going to glue that down. And that looks good. And I'm going to put a rose or a flower, not a rose. Let's move on right here. In your reserves, you will have a long piece like this. And this is exactly what I am going to use. Let's measure to fit. And we'll trim a skinny piece, or you, if you have a wider piece. You'll want to cut it, trim it to fit for the bottom. We'll apply glue, and we'll glue that down. I'm going to grab three flat back pearls, and I'm going to space them out and glue them down. While my flat back pearls are drying, grab one of your paper clips, grab some of your lace, and all we do for this is bring that clip all the way to the center there and we just tie once tightly and now you have a clip this is really cute I want to give you an example but all you have to do is anything that you want to do is just clip it on and now you have some pretty little lace hanging down. So that is an example of what you can do there. And I think I'll just slide a couple pieces back up underneath there. 
And this has for writing. This one has some area for writing. I may put white cardstock to the back of that. Let's flip our page. Here. I want to use some of this, and you should have this still in your reserves, and we're just going to measure to fit. Our first cut being going down, and then we will go across. So let's do that and glue it down. All right, let's move on. So here I need a broader thing. So I am just going to grab out of my reserves. I still have some of this left. And I will measure to fit, and I will glue this down. So in my reserves, I found this little piece here. On the back, it's the feathers. If you don't have it, you should have some in your paper pack if you want to do this, or just look in your scraps for whatever you got. And I am going to back this to some white cardstock and cut around the edges, and I'll show you mine. So what I did was I got this, and I just add, added some lace to my paper clip, and I will paper clip this to the top. And you can dangle these down if you want, or however you'd like to do. But this now is writable, and it looks good. And I think I'll just tuck that in for some decoration. Okay, before we go any further, just in case some of you want to jump ahead and finish this up uh, on your own, I'm taking two pieces of my white cardstock. I've got them doubled up. And all I'm going to do is measure over six inches and cut. I'm going to lay these, each one, 12 inches across my board here. And what I'm going to do is score each one at six inches. And then I'm going to fold and burnish. So let's get all of ours ready to go. In your paper pack, grab out one of these and it has this on the back and grab out the one with the fox. Let's trim off those trim pieces. We'll start with the fox. Matter of fact, you can just double these right on up. It won't matter. And we will turn it. Measure over five and seven eighths inch and cut. Measure over again five and seven eighths inch and cut. So this is what you should have, and on each one of these, what we're going to do is measure over 5 and 7 eighths inch and cut, and we'll measure over again 5 and 7 eighths inch and cut. All we're going to do now, and our opening is over here, is we're going to take each one of these and we're going to glue it to the front, and we'll take another one and we're going to glue it to the back. All of these, we will have these facing up. So let's do that. I have all four of my folders completed on both sides. So what we've just done is create more writing space for us on the outside and the inside. Let's grab our book and on your first very middle what we're going to do is slide that in right in there so that you can pull this out at any time and uh, write on it. Let's go to the second one and I'm just going to slide this right on in there. We'll go to the third. Slide that in and to the fourth. Whoops, what happened there? I had one more. Here we go. And the fourth. Perfect. All right, let's go back to where we were and continue on. I think we were right here. So now really quick see how we are beginning to fill out and we have plenty of room. In your reserves you will find this long 12 inch piece on the back it looks like this and what we want to do is just we're going to measure to fit right here so we'll go like this and we'll go like that. Our first cut will be like this and then like that. You got your piece cut uh, glue it down then let's cut a piece of lace whatever lace that you have I'm going to be using this, and we're going to glue it down right like that. I got my lace down. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just some 
leftover scraps of my lace and you can see what you have. Uh, this I believe is the leftover scraps of cutting off of this and all I'm going to do is glue that right down right like that. I close the blind maybe you can see a little better but just glue that down. Okay we are flipping and we are moving on and we are getting towards the end of our second thing here and in your reserves you will find this and I want to make sure that I get that fox in there so I'm going to bring it down we're going to measure to fit this so our first cut is like this and then we'll go over and then we're going to glue it down to our pocket this leftover piece let's just stick that in our pocket for now there's something to write on we are flipping we are coming to this and in your reserves this will fit nicely what I'm going to do is I have a wider so I am just going to the beehive uh, is going to be centered in between my trim as best I can anyway so I'm first going to cut like this and then I'll trim it to fit and I'm going to glue that down and I'll show you mine we are moving on and I come to this page and I have a little bit left here I'm just going to measure to fit and put that right in the middle there. So I'll trim it and glue down this piece. If you uh, don't have enough to do that, look in your reserves for possibly a long piece like this to use or uh, something like that. But try to reserve this because I'd like to cut these out and use them. If you have this leftover like me, if you're using the large and, and whatnot, let's cut this little piece out right here. And we're just going to glue it to the center. If you do not have it, no worries, it looks good without. We are moving on. And we are in our third block. In your reserves, you should find some skinny little pieces. Um, that should fit. Now me, I'm using this on the back, it looks like this. And I am just going to measure to fit this. And I think that will be good. So uh, if you do not have that, there is plenty of leftover scraps. Matter of fact, that one I have, I might use this one instead. It's more colorful. If you have this one on the back, it looks like this. Let's just use this one. This one, if you found it that I was about ready to use, uh, keep it handy because we have, I think we have more of these little uh, tucks to uh, add. In your reserves, if you can find this on the back, it looks like this. Let's divide up these cards. I'm just going to set these off to the side. I'm going to use the fox and I am going to use some of my lace on the paper clip. Okay, we're, we are moving on. We have that. Oh, grab your butterfly, stick that up there. We are coming to this and let's see what we have look in your reserves to see if you have a long piece like this if not you can grab from your paper pack and cut a narrow piece we're going to measure to fit on this and we'll cut it to fit and glue it down on my leaves i cut apart some of my uh vines so I can just glue some of this down and I've got a flower oh that looks cute too I'm gonna leave this alone I'm gonna save this for a different thing but we are done with that let's move on that's good we could still write on that we come to this this is where we can use this uh, I had you set this to the side if you cannot find it 
uh, no worries, you can always grab something from your reserves. So let's trim to fit this piece. I'm going to grab some of my lace and I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to grab this little piece that you can write on the back still and I'll just slip that in for now. I still have a lot of uh, white paper and stuff that we'll have to add after the tutorial and cut them to the sizes that we like. But I think that that looks good. We are moving on here. Locate a long skinny piece from your reserves. Uh, if you need to measure to fit, do so. We're just going to glue that right on down. We are moving on. So as you can see, making the journals, they are uh, quite easy to do and a lot quicker than a mini album. I have this in my reserves and I am going to use it and I think I'll make sure that the butterfly is there. Now I'm not quite wide enough but that's okay. I'm going to go with it and I'm going to trim and then I'm going to glue my piece down. I have some lace here and I'm going to glue this down. I put a flat back pearl in the center. We are now ready to move on to our next page as soon as you are ready. Here I have some leftovers and in my reserves and I am just going to measure to fit. So this is just a matter of grabbing from your scraps and using it. Now one thing you can also do, and I'm going to show you, is you know the trim pieces I told you to keep. You can cut off little pieces like so, and I've got glue all over me. Ah. Just clip them into arrows and you can add stuff to your white pages or even on this side. I've got some of my leafy vine left over and I'm going to place this. I have a flower and I'm going to place it right here. We are moving on. We have this, so look in your reserves for a thin piece. You can, I'm going to use this that I have. Again, if you have different size trim and you're needing to get into your paper pack, do so. Um, I could use it like this or like this, and I'm going to glue it down just like this. Got mine down. I am moving on. I have another pocket. And in my reserves... I do have this, and I'm going to measure to fit. And on the back, it looks like that. I have mine down, and I'm going to flip to here. In my reserves, I have some left over here. And I am going to trim this to fit and glue it down. We are moving on and we are to the last page and we need to get something for that. In your reserves you should have this and you have some with the birds on it. I'm going to measure from this side and then I'm going to glue it down. If you are having a hard time locating this piece on the back, it's the map, by the way. And I think that looks good. And my leftover piece, I'm going to slide back behind there. So this is our journal. Now all we have to do is cut for paper or perhaps you have some paper that you uh, already have in your stash for journaling, but you can definitely load this up. All right, I'm going to stamp mine really quick so that you can see, get an idea of different things that I like to do. And it might help you when you're stamping, if you're gonna stamp. So I did a little bit of stamping and I do have a tip for you. 
uh, if you are stamping after the fact, like myself, let's just kind of look. I just used some stamps that I've had, one of which is, I got this at, it may have been Joann's or Michael's, but this has been my all-time favorite. It's the leafy one. Uh, but years ago I got it. I don't know if they still have it. But I just did some stamping here and there. Let's see. There's that, and I still have yet to add, but a tip for if you're stamping after the fact, what you can do is to help you is to slide a block back behind, and then you can, if you have the wooden ones, uh, even if you have like these type, uh, you know, you put those on a smaller block, and then you can put your heavy block underneath, and then you can stamp. So that has saved me. But as you can see, I just did here and there, just some things. So, um, so that can give you some ideas. I still have some paper clips left that I will uh, put my stuff on. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make a journal with your signature blocks in there. Um, you can add extra white paper, um, however it gets pretty thick when you are using 85 pound or heavier. 65 pound doesn't seem to be too much of an issue, but you could slip in on your next journal if you just want to experiment an extra sheet in each block of uh, white or your decorated paper. So that concludes this tutorial and as you can see our book used to close like this and now it's more full. And the more paper we pull, put in the more full it will be. Happy crafting everybody and I will see you next time.